Today's tutorial was inspired by a community question. If you have questions about DaVinci Resolve, you can join our How To DaVinci Resolve Facebook group. Link is in the description. So the question that one of our community members submitted, they asked, is it possible to add some type of wobbly animation to text? It certainly is in DaVinci Resolve. We'll need to leverage Fusion for this, but it's not that difficult. There's only a few steps. So right here is our project. We're going to add in um, a little bit of text on this, almost like a title card sort of thing. There are two different ways that we could add this in. We could add it in as a Fusion Comp standalone so that if we need to retime something, we can just move that animation around or we can actually implement it into the video clip itself. There's pros and cons to both of them. So let's just start with the pros of adding it into the actual video itself. When you take, so if I was to cut like this and say, okay, right here is where I want to have that animation. I now go into Fusion, I can see where I'm at, what I'm adding. So that's really good if you need to add text to a certain area. So if I was to just add text along this border, sort of, you know, something like that, because now this will get piped into Fusion. The downside to this is it will only be in this little area. That's the only way. So if I would ever need to retime this, like let's say, uh, I need to use this portion down here and like move the timeline around the portion that actually has the text on it. It's going to be a bit difficult. It's not impossible. It's just a bit difficult. The other way that we could do this instead of actually cutting our clip up is we could just add in a fusion comp that we could move around. So to do that, I'll just come right up here. Um, just right clicking in this window. If you don't see a new fusion comp, it's just because your uh, version of DaVinci Resolve is out of date. It's an older version um, opposed to when we're uh, filming this. So I'm just going to click on that. You can name this. So I'm just going to name it Bourbon. And then I'm going to change the time of it to 10 seconds. And this is going to take your native frame rate for your project. And that's perfectly fine. So I'll just hit that. Now I can take this Bourbon timeline and I can drop it on here. Now what's going to happen is in here, I'm going to have that animation and I'll be able to move that animation around outside of wherever I have this um, lower half. The only downside is currently we can't pipe in the video from this other clip. So we're going to have to add it in. And if you need to you know, specifically put it in certain spots and you're not exactly sure, uh, you're going to have to jump back from the edit page to the fusion page. Maybe in you know a later update, they'll do something so that we don't have to do that. But for now, that's what we'll have to do. So jumping over into fusion now, once we're in fusion, I'm just going to click clips and then down here, we'll see the clip that we're currently on. So we're on the fusion clip. If you're you know mistakenly on the other one, just click on the fusion clip. And then once we're in here, now we can start to add in our title. So I'll just grab this and add in our bourbon and we'll view it over here. And then I grabbed a text that's kind of fitting for this. It was called little bird, I believe. Yeah, there we go. And I'll just make this uh, 1.2. So there we go. <clears throat> so there's our text to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. All right. So there are two things that we need to run this one we need to add in a node to do the warping and then the other node is we need to tell uh that warp tool where to add itself in so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit shift and then spacebar at the same time and we're just going to put in dis for displace so we'll add that in. And then the other thing that we can add in is fast noise. Fast noise is actually over here. We can just add that in, or you can type uh, fast in here and you'll also get the fast noise. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to two views so I can show you how this works. So I'm just going to take my text and connect my text in, and we are connecting it in to the input of the displace. And then up here, we have the foreground of the displace. So it's not background foreground, it's input back, uh, foreground. 
So that's our displace. Now we are going to drive it with this fast noise. So if we take a look at our fast noise, all it is is just random data. So if I move this, it you know moves around. And what we're looking at here is if we look down here in the corner, we can see that our values are currently 0.23. And if we come over a brighter spot, 0.6. So this is going to say how much of this displace effect am I going to add to uh, the element that is on the input. So now if I connect this in, we don't really see much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to boost up the contrast, which is going to take the dark areas, make them darker, take the light areas, make them lighter, which will end up taking these values and making them higher. So it, the effect is going to be stronger. So I'm just going to add that in. And now we can see up here, we are actually in the negatives. And then in here, we're on, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So now if we move this, and we actually view it, so we view it over here now, we can see it's moving it around. Now it's moving it around real big and it doesn't look like the pieces are wobbling. And to fix that, there's two things we can do. One, we can do the scale. We can scale this so that the pieces become smaller. The other thing we can do is we can add in detail so that you know it's not big blobs anymore. So now when we move that, it's wobbling around. Now if these values are too high, we can always bring down the brightness so it's not as strong. The other thing we can do is in the displace itself, we have the ability to control how the displace is being implemented onto whatever that input is. So, and if we play this, obviously we don't see any type of animation. And that's because the driver for this whole animation, the fast noise, doesn't have anything to have it change. So I'm going to come back to the beginning and we're going to go back into the fast noise and then I'm just going to make a keyframe here and then we're just going to come down to the end and we'll just add, uh, let's uh, do four. And so as we play this, it's moving and then over here, now we have that animation. So that might be good enough. You know, you could make it faster. You just come to this end frame, make this number higher. Obviously it's going to change a lot more frequently. Um, or you can make it stronger, which I just showed you. So the final thing is we're going to come from this displace and then we're going to go into the media out, which will then push it back onto the timeline. So now if we come back to the timeline and now we have it here in this little area. And now what we can do is we can move this anywhere we want and it'll be over that area and we'll have that same animation. So that's kind of like a nice way to be able to add the effect in um, and then be able to change things if you need to. Uh, the only thing is currently we can't actually see it. So the line that went across the top here, it started out as red and then it went to blue. And what that actually is, is it's caching it. So uh, anything that's in Fusion, it's going to compute all of that stuff and then it's going to make it into a video file and place that on your computer so that when it plays through this, it doesn't have to compute all of the stuff that is on the fusion tab. Now for this, for this effect, it's not that intense. So we really, uh, uh, making sure that things are cached isn't really a big concern, but once you start to get really uh, complex fusion, uh, projects, it will really start to hinder your performance. And so caching is a big thing that you'll want to do. I don't really want to dive into caching too much, but when you initially come here and if you have enable background caching after five seconds, what it's going to do is it's going to wait until the program is idle for five seconds. So if you're doing a bunch of stuff, it's not going to start caching until you paused. So while I was talking to you, it ended up uh, going through that. Um, I have a, another video about caching and I'll probably end up doing uh, several others because a lot of things have changed since I made that video, but at least you can get a rundown of how caching works. So now if we play this, we have the wobbling going on. And if this isn't, you know, properly positioned, you could go back into the fusion tab and move it around or an easy fix is just clicking on the fusion comp here, just clicking here and then just moving this around. Cause it's all, it's, it's thinking that this is a video clip in itself. 
So you have all the controls that any other video clip has. You can come over here, you know, change it around um, all you want. You can rotate it and so forth. So you could add very slight adjustments over here, but if it's, you know, a pretty intensive, you probably just want to go back into Fusion and do it over there. But at least here I can move this out of this brightness because they kind of were blurring together or, uh, you know, similar in, in uh, brightness so it was hard to see so i could just bring it up here and then um, now i have it up there so that's how you would add in an animation and you could you could add in uh, you know you could do this to a lot of different things the same effect would be used for adding um like waves like heat waves and stuff like that where it's you know disrupting the video kind of doing that warp effect, you would use a similar thing like this, a similar setup like this. Um, but that's kind of how you would add it in. If you could also, you know, instead of having the text in here, you could bring in your logo, bring it into here, and then you could have that warp effect, you know, with your logo as well. But that's kind of it. Like I said, if you have a question and you're you know, trying to find the answer for it, you could always go over to our How To DaVinci Resolve Facebook group, ask it there. A member of the community will probably get back to you if it's something that they have uh, dealt with in the past. Uh, and the link's down in the description. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.